uh, we have learned okay, that transition elements okay, are known as D block element that can form more one or more stable ions with an incomplete D subshell. So if you look at your periodic table of elements, okay, we uh, let's say if we look at the period number three, okay, we do not include scandium and zinc as our transition metals. Okay, the reason why we do not include them because scandium and zinc, they can only form a particular ion. Like for example, scandium, they can only form plus three. Zinc can only form plus two. So when I actually write down the electronic configuration, okay, for ions, so you see scandium will be 4s2, 3d1. So when you remove three electrons, you remove first from the 4s, so two electrons remove, and then the, uh, the rest you remove from D. So you are going to get 4s0 and 3d0. Now, in order to become a transition metal, you need to form at least one uh, ion with an incomplete D shell. And we know that scandium can only form one ion, and that ion doesn't satisfy uh, the requirement. Therefore, scandium will not be considered to become as a transition metal. The same thing applies for zinc because zinc, if you look at the electronic configuration, zinc is going to be 4s2, 3d10. So when you remove two electrons, so you always remove from 4s rather than removing from 3d. So when you remove this 4s will become 4s0. Okay, and then the 3d is complete. Okay, so we do, uh, we want in order to satisfy transition metal, the metal must form at least one ion that has incomplete D subshell, but here is complete, therefore zinc is also not going to be transition metal. So if we want to the, write the electronic configuration of copper, do remember this one we have learned in the electronic configuration, the atomic structure, yeah? copper is a special case. So we write them, instead of writing 4s2, 3d9, okay, we write them as 4s1, 3d10. So when you want to remove the one electron, let's say, for example, copper plus, because copper can form plus and then two plus. So if you want to remove one, you remove from the 4s1. So you will become 4s0, 3d10. Now, do remember when you have 4s0, 3d10, the 3d subshell is complete. Okay, it's complete, doesn't satisfy the definition for uh, transition metal. But do remember, copper plus is not the only ion that they can form. Okay, they can also form copper two plus. So when it comes to copper two plus, you remove one electron over here, and then you remove another electron over here. So you are going to get 4s0, 3d9. So this 3d9 satisfy the definition of a transition metal can actually uh, form at least one ion with incomplete D subshell. So that is going to actually help us to actually say that, yeah, copper is a transition metal. So that is how we can define transition metal. At least one, one or more uh, ions that can form incomplete uh, D shell. Yeah. So it's okay, Nicole Trisha. Okay, uh, and then, okay, it's okay, Aneta. So if you move on, okay, so the uh, apart from a special case, yeah, copper is a special case last time when we learned in AS, we also have another special case related to chromium because chromium also, when you write down the electronics uh, configuration, we, uh, we do not write down as 4, as 2, 3d4 because it's not stable it's much more better if we can write it as 4s1 3d5 this is the uh, the the correct answer for chromium okay so chromium and copper they are kind of a uh, special case when we write the electronic configuration but chromium can actually form let's say in this case they can form 3 plus and 6 plus if it is 3 plus i need to remove three electrons so one electron i remove here the remaining two electrons I remove from the D. So I'm going to get 4S0, 3D3. So this one satisfies the definition, an incomplete D subshell. And if I remove six electrons, I remove one over here and then remove all the five here, I'm going to get 4S0, 3D0. 
So when I do that, this one doesn't satisfy the transition metals definition because they do not have any electrons in the D subshell. So because they at least have one, okay, therefore chromium is also a transition metal. So in this case, what do you need to remember? You need to remember in period number three, scandium okay, and zinc, they are not going to be considered to be uh, transition metal. Okay, so it's titanium all the way to copper. Okay, does it uh, does this thing uh, carry on? Okay, for the rest of the period, yes, actually. Okay, from here to here, they are transition metals. So this one, but it's not in your syllabus. Okay, we just need to know that. Okay, titanium to copper, they are going to be transition metals. Okay, now if we want to write down. Um, Okay, the electronic configuration of the following ions. Now, using all this data that we have, okay, if I want to write down, okay, all the data, uh, like for example, titanium. So if I look at titanium, okay, we need to know that this is going to be 4s2, okay, titanium. So if I want to write for titanium, it's going to be 4s2, this one and this one. So 3d1, 3d2. So this one is going to be argon. So for titanium, I will write down as argon 4s2, 3d1, 3d2. Okay, that's going to be the uh, electronic configuration for titanium. So write down the electronic configuration for chromium. Chromium is special case, yeah? So it's going to be argon 4s2, Okay, for S2, 3D1, 3D2, 3D3, 3D4. Okay, supposed to be like this. But, okay, this is not correct. Okay, this is not correct. So, it's supposed to be written as AR, 4S1, 3D5. That's going to be the correct one. And writing about cobalt. Okay, so let's actually write down for cobalt. Cobalt, if you look over here, cobalt is here. So this is argon 4s2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, cobalt is 3d7. Fe3 plus. So let's actually write down for Fe first. Fe, argon 4s2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 3D6. So when you have Fe3 plus, you need to remove the three electrons from where first? You must remove from 4S. So when you remove from 4S, okay, you are going to get Ar4S0. And then one more you remove, so 3D5. Okay, that's going to be Fe3 plus. So the next, okay, if you want to actually show for Ni2+, plus so Ni first, okay. So how do I actually get for Ni? Ni is over here, okay. So 4S2, AR, 4S2, 3D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 3D, 8. So if you want Ni2+, plus, you need to remove the two electrons. So AR, you remove from 4S. So 4S0, 3D8. That's going to be an I2+. Plus. Cu2+, plus, okay, copper, I think you need to know it's very special. So when the way we write, so this one, if I count, is 3D9, but I don't write it as 3D9. It's argon, 4S1, 3D10. Okay, no need for me to write down the earlier one then convert again, yeah? You need to know. But now, when you have copper plus, copper plus, you are going to remove the one electron for 4S. So this will be 4S0, 3D10. So that's going to be the answer for that. Now, for B, explain why scandium okay, only forms one ion, zinc, uh, scandium 3 plus, and zinc, which only forms uh, zinc 2 plus, are not called transition elements. Okay, they are not called transition elements because 
they do not form at least one ion with incomplete D subshell. Okay, do not form at least one ion with incomplete D subshell. That will be the answer. Why is the maximum oxidation state of manganese is plus seven? So for Mn, this is Mn. Mn is argon, 4s2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3d5. The maximum why it's seven is because you can remove the two electrons here. You can remove the another five electrons here before you remove the argon. Argon is a uh, noble gas. Okay, it's not going to be easy to remove the electrons. So the maximum you can remove will be seven electrons. Therefore, you are going to get Mn7+. plus. So that's why the oxidation number is plus seven. Cannot be more than that. Okay. Look back at different oxidation states of vanadium shown in 24.2. I think I actually put it over here. Okay, so here, uh, this is what they want you to look. Okay, look at this and then say uh, state the oxidation state of vanadium okay, in each photo. Okay. Uh, hold on. Look back at different oxidation state, 24.2. State the oxidation state of the vanadium in each photo A to D. I think this one A to D. Which one A to D? I think maybe something to do with the question. I, I do not know which one they are referring. But anyway, they say that okay, this is going to be vanadium. So when you look at vanadium, there are uh, different, um, different oxidation state over there. So if you have vanadium plus two, maybe what I can do, maybe I change the question. So probably if you have plus two, let's actually write down the electronic configuration and so on. So vanadium alone, okay, let's actually look at vanadium alone. Vanadium alone is going to be 3D1, 3D2, 3D3. So 3D3. So argon, 4S2, 3D3. So if I have plus 2, what I will have? If I have plus 3, plus 4, and plus 5, okay, there are four oxidation number. One of the things that you need to know about transition metals, they have multiple oxidation number. Okay, they have multiple oxidation number. And then uh, for, uh, I think for scandium, okay, scandium three plus, zinc is two plus, they are not uh, transition metals, okay. But there are also some metals that can only have one oxidation number. So not all of them. So nickel also plus two, but they are transition metal also. Yeah. So possible to have more. Okay. Possible to have only one. So it's up to uh, the elements. Okay. But here, let's say vanadium uh, form plus two. So two electrons are gone. So it's so, supposed to be AR 4S0 3D3. So if you lose three electrons, it's supposed to be AR 4S0 3D2. If you lose four electrons, lose two here, lose two here. So AR, 4S0, 3D, 1. You lose five, okay? It's going to be AR, 4S0, 3D, 0. So do remember, when we look at the incomplete Okay, the ions with incomplete D subshell. Yeah, this is incomplete, incomplete, incomplete. So this one doesn't satisfy. But we know that at least one, okay, at least one of it must have partially uh, or incomplete D subshell. Therefore, okay, therefore vanadium is a transition element. Okay, so that is going to be something that you want to actually remember when you try to explain, yeah. Now, zirconium is the second row of the transition element beneath titanium. So beneath titanium, okay, if this is going to be zirconium beneath titanium, yeah, beneath. So 
uh, they say that okay um, is electronic configuration is three um, this 4d2 5s2 where krypton represents the electronic configuration of krypton okay the noble gas uh, with atomic number 36 predict the maximum oxidation state okay maximum stable uh, stable oxidation state of zirconium and explain your answer okay so jody what is going to be the maximum oxidation state for zirconium seven why seven jody uh, zirconium, is zirconium. Hey, no no four, four, uh, four, four, four. so there is going to be maximum is going to be plus four okay that's going to be the maximum. It cannot be plus seven, cannot be plus five and so on. Okay, maximum, they can only lose four. Okay, give the formula of oxide of zirconium, assuming zirconium exhibit the oxidation state in E part one. So this one is going to be zirconium plus four and then oxygen is always negative two. So if this one is supposed to be uh, ZnO2. Okay, it's supposed to be Zn. O2 times by two. Now, so now if I actually look at the physical properties of transition elements, okay, physical properties of transition elements, okay, we have already know that what are transition elements. Transition elements, they